All right, here we are, friends. Let's take a look at this game. Uh, played it uh, the other day, and it opened up with E4, so I tried our friend Alyokin. Alyokin? Al uh So we are definitely into the Alakain, the Alyokin game. My opponent, in this case, knows what to do, and he pushes uh, E5. And so in this case, I know what to do as well. So I rotate my knight to knight D5. My opponent follows up with... Um, D4, I push D6, and notice we are, we are in just a few seconds. I can't, I don't know if you guys can see the clock pretty well above and below. Uh, this happened in just a few seconds, so my opponent obviously knew what he was doing, and this is one of the first times I've seen someone who knew what they were doing, so very interesting stuff here. Uh, my opponent then played this move, bishop to uh, C4. When I looked at the database... One, two, three, four. This is the fifth most common move. And it was one that I was not prepared for. I, out of all the lines I looked at, I looked at what happens when C4 comes, right? We see, we've seen them. The three-pawn um, kind of opening that, transa that translates into the four-pawn maybe, or maybe to the exchange variation. We've seen knight F3, the modern variation. There's even an early exchange we kind of talked about in part of some of our exchange talk. And then F4, the um, um, continuing with the... Um, or pawn attack. So we kind of know what to do in those cases, but the one we didn't look at was this Balog variation. Balog variation? Not, I'm not familiar how you say that. But this bishop to b4. Okay. So what do we do here? Uh, in this case, I kind of um, treated this as part of if the pawn were pushed. So if a pawn were pushed to this square with an attack on this knight, I know what to do. The one thing that the difference in this is if this were a if now that this is a bishop and not a pawn, notice the threat here um, that does open up the door too. So the f7 pawn with this particular variation does become an immediate target. So I need to kind of take a look at what I can do to challenge that. Notice uh, this does immediately come with an attack on that particular bishop. So my opponent just retreated it which is a nice solid square. Uh, excellent move by my opponent. At this point in time, I don't really know what to do. Um, probably should consider... I, I spent some time thinking about this. Um, yeah, heck, almost a minute. Wow, look at the time. Look at my time down here. 9.46 to 8.40. I spent almost a minute considering um, because of the implications of what could happen along the F7 pawn. Uh, so I, I don't know the correct... I'm going to turn the engine on here because I don't know what the appropriate answer is. Looking at the database, it seems that making this exchange to possibly trading off the uh, queens seems like it actually might be a good idea this early on, specifically because it removes the threat of um, of the, uh, the, the early checkmate on F7. So maybe that's what we should do. Looking at the engine, the engine says... Ah, okay... Bishop to um, bishop to f5, and then I can park that bishop down here on g6. That would be that would be a good line. I hadn't considered that at all. Wonder what this is about. I guess there's really no threat yet, so just continuing to push to try to trap this bishop. Maybe. I'm not certain. And then, yeah, so the two possibilities that I see here that I didn't consider were capturing and forcing a queen trade or um, driving the bishop up. So I did not go that route. I decided to, oops, I decided just to continue with my plan and handle this when it comes. So I spent a considerable amount of time, like you could see, eight, almost a full minute, uh, more than a full minute, going through um, all of my calculations and talking myself through and double-checking my notes to see if I had anything on this. So I just decided to go with, in the, the Alyakin, we know that one of the themes is the Fianchetto of the Dark Square Bishop. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to continue that trend and see if that gets me anywhere. Of course, my opponent immediately transitioned down to, uh, to put the pressure here. Notice that would be an early checkmate. So I finally decided that one of the lines I was looking at was to give up the, um, the, the Bishop pair. Right, almost force a trade here. Doesn't quite force a trade, but it almost forces a trade um, on the uh, 
I would like to get maybe my queen up to put a little more defense there so I don't have to ruin my structure in front of my king. But another thing that we've looked at in the past, another thing we've looked at is when this exchange takes place, if we castle queen side, that's a possibility. So that's in the back of my mind too, is I still can castle queen side if I have to. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this um, off. So my opponent does make the exchange. I do drop, now this is the part that, um, the part that I have a problem with now. I shouldn't say I have a problem with. This does become an issue, and we'll watch this as, as it develops. But this queen infiltrate, spectacular. My opponent played this extremely well. 100% um, hats off to my opponent. I do want to make a quick note here back. Um, notice pushing this g6 pawn, it does take away the h5 square for my opponent's queen. So it does limit where my opponent's queen can go. And so I assumed that my opponent was bringing their queen out, that they would drop it here on f3. And I just, I, f I always forget that queen on f3 does immediately put pressure on the b7 pawn. And since I'm moving my light square bishop out of the way, this is not defended. So I, I missed that in the game, but more importantly, I really couldn't do anything about it. Um, there was really nothing I could do to prevent that um, at the time. And now here is how do we... I was looking to, number one, I guess my rook was defended. So my number one, I was looking to defend my rook. And the best way to do that is to bring my knight out into one of these two squares. Probably, so I considered bringing my knight here to c6. Problem is that's immediately undefended. So your opponent picks that up for free. Um, which means really the only good square to bring my knight to, d ditto, by the way, ditto with a6. The only good square to bring my knight to is uh, uh, d7. So I, I forgot that my rook was was defended, indeed defended by my knight. So I missed that, but that's okay. Over defending is a good thing. Notice now everything is defended. My opponent can't go anywhere. Everything is defended. I mean, my opponent can obviously escape, but my stuff is at least defended. So that's all that my opponent's going to get is that one pawn. Now my oops. Now my queen side and my king side are both a little. A little messed up. So now I have to start evaluating, can my king live in, this, in the center of the board? Possibly. Notice the evaluation is not too, too bad in my opponent's favor. I'm not out of the game yet. Um, I feel discombobulated. Like my, my pieces are very reactionary to what my opponent's done. And so I'm deciding I need to get, um, you know, get some activity back in my life. This does um, give myself a nice square, but it also allows me to reroute this knight um, if I need to, to maybe give me some uh, opportunities to defend. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, my, my opponent brings his knight out. Definitely looking at these squares. Um, so I have this one covered. This one, my opponent's looking to trade. So they're up a pawn and they're looking to trade. That makes sense. With this, things start to get complicated pretty fast. My opponent has an attack. My opponent has it defended. Um, my opponent still has threats. That Well, I guess I do have that square covered, but my opponent has some threats that I have to be concerned with. So I put a blocker in the way. Perhaps I should have routed this knight around instead. I mean, that was kind of the idea, but my, my, um, my d7 knight sitting there felt a little weak. And I thought, you know, I can doubly defend my knight here. You know, that feels good. So my opponent made a trade, and I got out of this pin. So my opponent could have pinned... Oops. My opponent could have pinned um, my knight here, like they should have. But you can see what immediately happens next. And this game goes... Well, pardon the expression, but the thing, things fall to shit pretty, pretty fast at this point in time. So my, it all started back here with this bishop placement. And this bishop placement I never solved. And I think that I'm going to spend some time. See, the engine even says the correct move is to continue with our plan. And if we look at the database, the database says most people continue with that plan just like if this was a pawn. Um, this pressure along this diagonal is serious. 
And looking back now, I really probably would have much preferred this bishop so that this bishop can come here, defend the, not only the f7 square, defend the h3 square, and prevent my opponent from infiltrating. So this bishop seems like it's probably, if we ever see this again, right, and we can remember this because this is the um, Aliakin defense where my opponent brings their light square bishop into play, I need to remember to use my light square bishop. So kind of like in the Italian, we remember that by saying we mirror our opponent's um, bishop, right? In the Italian, our bishop comes up and mirrors the opponent's bishop. Well, in this ver variation, we need to be prepared to get our bishop out. So our opponent gets their bishop out early, we're going to get our bishop out early. They go to the fourth rank, we go to our equivalent fourth rank with our light square bishop. So if we remember that, I think we're going to be in better shape. Uh, turn this off, go all the way back here. So yeah, so my opponent then has used their queen to really screw me over. Notice the only thing stopping now, um, I have taken away my defender from the rook. Only thing stopping my opponent's infiltration is I would have had to get up here and castle somehow, but notice the queen uh, is preventing me from castling because you can't castle through check. And that would definitely move my king through check. And my opponent made the right call here. I should have traded with the queen. If a queen trade comes, then I'm not in any more danger. But I took with the knight, and that completely left my rook exposed. My opponent snatched it up almost instantly. You can see they waited barely a couple seconds, four seconds on that move. Probably just double-checking they weren't trapping their queen. And now, um, yeah, there's really not a lot of good options here. I'm just way down in material. So this becomes a scramble for me to try to figure out how to possibly get some defenders or attackers or some kind of counterattack. My opponent does drop um, a knight here, but the concern I had was... Um, I'm trying to remember what, what concern I had. I think I was worried that if I moved my knight off, my opponent could bring their, their rook down and then, I forget, I forget what my concern was, but I didn't want to take this knight right away. But my opponent did drop it, right? So this knight is dropped. Um, I think I was trying to put extra defense here, but my opponent still has it attacked twice. So I'm not certain. Oh, right, 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 right. I, I was considering I have alignment issues, and I wanted to remove this knight. So I, sh I should have just removed the knight. I don't know why I didn't. I really don't know why I didn't remove that knight. But there was something going on in my head that, hey, there's a problem here. Probably just me being tilted because <laughs> I gave up this rook. Probably just me being tilted. It happens. So, yep, dropping more material here because I can't defend because uh, my opponent's going to bring their rook down. Can't defend against that, so I really have to either... Can't move the knight because it's pinned... Um, yeah, there's really nothing I can do. I guess this to try to offer a queen trade. I guess that's probably the best option. That gets me out of that mess, but... Still not easy any way you slice it. Still way down on material. Yeah, so this, this gets ugly pretty fast. So I was looking at this over the board, thinking that, you know, maybe I can win back material. Because notice this attack now does come with an immediate attack on the person, my opponent's rook. But my opponent doesn't need this rook. I was just so concerned about the dangers of, right, if I take here, my opponent just take, goes here, right? I take that rook, then... I guess, I guess that I do have this covered. I was just concerned that having the queen... Yeah, what happens here? I guess I can run away. Oh, because that comes with check. Right, and my opponent has back rank issues. All right, so I guess that is a little bit more um, easier for, for me to deal with than my opponent to deal with.
Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So I saw this, right, over the board. I, um, I will say that I did see that this is a possibility with a threat on the rook. I did see that that is a possibility, but I, I also knew that, that my opponent's rook isn't going anywhere. My rook is really not going anywhere because I kind of need it. I need to get my king out of here. Uh, my opponent's a queen and a rook working this close to my king seemed dangerous to me, and I just kept expecting somehow to to miss a possibility. But I guess the, the queen is kind of trapped in here a little bit. Isn't really going anywhere. So while, yes, I saw this, I immediately dismissed it as um, a pipe dream, that this is really not going to help me any because this rook, this rook is unneeded. This rook is unnecessary for my opponent. They have enough tools down here to get the job. Or so I thought. But really, it's amazing that this is um, that this developed the way it did. Yeah, I should have. I guess I should have gone after that. So I saw my opponent's um, back rank issues, and I kept waiting to try to exploit that somehow, but just couldn't quite get there. Now I'm really mad at myself for allowing the rook to get into the game. Um, if I had stayed here. Right, if I had brought my rook here, my opponent could not have brought this because then I, I do have checkmate because the that's undefended. But now it's too little too late to get there. And my opponent missed this completely, thank goodness. But yeah, I should have gone for something like this. But my, I would allow my opponent could have moved their knight out of the way, yep, which defends here. Why didn't I take here? I forget why. I think I just didn't want any more trades. I wanted to keep my material on the board as much as possible. Yeah, this was game over. I just had too much material gone. I just couldn't do anything about it. So I was uh, way back here, from pretty much from here on out, uh, as soon as I dropped this rook, Pretty much from here on out, I was in scramble mode, really just trying to come up with anything that might help me, and I just couldn't see well enough in um, into to protect myself. But let me look at my position at this point in time. My pawns, I've got three separate pawn islands, not at all connected. My knight is not connected. My rook is on the back rank. I mean, my bishop is on the back rank doing nothing except blocking my rook. My king is in the middle of the board. I could have easily, right here, like I could have easily, well, I guess that comes with checks. There's really nothing I can do. Still can't even castle. Damn, yeah, I don't know. I do not know. Not sure, guys, but I don't know. I don't see how I could have gotten out of it. And this, this right here was the move back here on, on on move thirteen. So pretty much, I lost the game around move thirteen. Not a very good showing for our friend El Yekin. Uh, not a good showing for me. But honestly, I I really feel that um, this bishop move was way stronger than I gave it credit for at the time. Uh, I just immediately considered it as a pawn, and I knew that I had some defensive work here to do, but I I did not um, at all prepare well for it. Um, I really, I'm, I'm saying this over and over again because I'm saying it to myself. If we see this bishop in the Aliekin, we are going to be prepared for our bishop. Once our knight's out of the danger zone, we're going to be prepared for our bishop. So hopefully I can remember that for next time. Alrighty, everybody. What a wild game. Um, this queen became just deadly twice along this diagonal. Absolutely wrecked me. And I just could not do anything about it. So my opponent played this marvelously. The only mistake my opponent had was pretty much here. Technically, it allowed me some counterplay. But my opponent's position is fairly solid. And my position isn't. So kind of mad that I didn't go for it just to see what would happen. Yeah, because that can come here.
Yeah, because you have to sack it. It says checkmate in three, but it's really checkmate in one because there's no stopping it. It's a completely forced checkmate. Eh, I wish I'd gone for it. It was the counterplay I was looking for, and I wish I'd gone for it. Oh, well. Lessons learned, friends. Lessons learned. So we are going to bank this one under our friend Ayekin. This was not a good game for me, but it was a very... Uh, it was a good educational tool. Um, and I hope I do get more of these educational tools, so that way I can stop getting these educational tools. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.